right here is the age phone brother and here's what you can do with it brother you can post youtube clips of interviews where you make no attempt to apologize for your past racism brother you could go to twitter and culturally appropriate the word brother brother you could go to instagram and post how you wish you'd have just beaten your ex-wife linda so everyone would love you like they seem too stone cold brother you could conduct online interviews telling hurricane victims to stop crying like babies and talk about how COVID is god's wrath brother but most importantly of all with this age phone brother most importantly of all, with this H phone, brother, you can tell all your friends about the first time, brother, the only time, brother, the last time, brother, until the next time, brother, when the Schleg Daddy and OTRS Central review Raw in 2021, brother. So what you gonna do, brother, when Legends Night on Raw and the Schleg Daddy's Raw review run wild on you? <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing we're not live. I mean, I don't know what to make of it. Like, I keep getting this telling me about entertaining myself. Like, what does that even mean? What? Wait, what? We're live? Like, right now? The camera's recording? Are you serious? Stop! Damn it, we're professionals here! I am an award-winning YWC journalist, and the button says so! Because not only am I a one-time winner, like the glorious Sami Zayn, I am a two-time winner. That's why it will be sweet to repeat. I am the Schleg Daddy, and this is OTR Essential. And welcome to this week's Raw Review. Unbelievable. Bush League. I'm surrounded by amateurs around here. And speaking of amateur hour, let's talk about Raw. My God, it was Legends Night. Basically, if you're alive, have a pulse, and are able to show up, we're going to call you a legend, whether you ever did anything with the company or not. Yeehaw! So the way to follow up on the big cliffhanging, finish to last week's Raw, did you set Alexa Bliss on fire or not, was just basically to dive into Ms. TV. That only really morphed into some really bad, unfunny humor, between the Morrison and Miz, the Miz and Morrison, it doesn't even matter. See, that's what the lack of professionalism does. It even makes a two-time award-winning YWC journalist mess up. This is Bush League, amateur hour. It's bad enough my shirt didn't come back from the dry cleaners. It's a Versace shirt. You got to take care of it. It's horrible. But all this Miz TV appearance did was it turned into some really bad, really, really, really bad back and forth between Miz and Morrison and the New Day that morphed into a really sad Teddy Long appearance. Not because it wasn't cool to see Teddy Long, but it just turned into a reminder of Miz and Morrison are going to face the Undertaker. And it now reminds us that we don't get Teddy Long on TV anymore and we don't get The Undertaker anymore. It just leads to a pointless tag match where at one point in time, Kofi Kingston twerks, twerks, twerks. A former world champion for WWE is twerking in the ring to start off 2021. The hell is going on here? And everyone looks like jerks. Did this match have any point? Of course not. Did most of this show have any point? Of course not. And let me help understand this. They took Elias from an interesting, entertaining heat getter to a jobber with a Bible funk being mega buddy. Who does that? Stupid. And they broke up the Iconics just to put Peyton Royce on a different tag team that's even less interesting and absolutely going nowhere? Of course they did. And of course Charlotte would botch the natural selection. She's the biggest, baddest, botchiest bitch that you ever know. She botches more in the ring than what happens with her plastic surgery. And yet somehow you still got people that sit there and think that she's a star. She's a prop. And a flat-ass, horrible acting, no charisma having one at that. And how many times do we have to go down this same old crap of Daddy Dearest getting in the way, costing her, and then she hates her dad and tells him to stay out of her business and there's absolutely no payoff to it. How many times we got to do this? This is your first show of 2021. You were supposed to pop a rating here. No Monday night, 
football to go against. You're bringing in all these legends. Whether they're legends or not, doesn't matter. And this, this is the type of crap that you give the fans for their misery of having to sit there for three hours on a Monday night? Embarrassing! My God, who watches this crap? Three hours every Monday? What you should do is go to Fox on Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern, and watch Roman Reigns, the head of the table, the tribal chief, uh, the universal champion. Oh, I love him. I still want to have his pups. Roman Reigns. Yeah, you are just killing me tonight. Roman Reigns is the biggest star in WWE today. Roman Reigns is the biggest babyface in professional wrestling today. Love you, Roman. Call me Roman Rules. Hell yeah, bitches. Love you, Roman. Call me. This is a perfect way for Vince to start 2021, isn't it? Put in the screws to the black man as much as he possibly can. He loves when Kofi Kingston twerks in the ring, all suspect as hell, so that way he can come out and have Matt Riddle scat Matt himself. Blue, 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 blue. Beat Bobby Lashley. Scat Matt tapped. He absolutely tapped. It should have been over. But no, instead, you gotta have Bobby Lashley lose to freaking Matt Riddle's dumbass on the first row of the year. Newsflash, Vince, this is Raw, not NXT. Stop doing NXT crap with what's supposed to be your flagship show. Horrible. And why are the Hurt Business looting, losing to Lucha House Party? Like if anything, Lucha House Party should have been sitting there when they saw Melina backstage and bumped into her. They should have been distracted by the one question that everybody wants the answer to. Just how big is Batista's dick? How the hell could they then come out and wrestle a team like the Hurt Business and then win? And then why do we already have to be teasing dissension amongst the group? Can't we have anything nice anymore? Can't we? Why? Why do we always do this crap, Vince? All these stupid things that have no heat. All of these stupid things that don't matter. All these stupid things that are one gigantic waste of damn time. Hello, everyone out there. My name is the Blue Borton. I am the number one wrestling fan of Mr. Randall Keith Orton. Hooray! Big Show, Ric Flair. You had better not despair. Because it doesn't matter. The Viper will strike anytime and anywhere. And Cardi B, most importantly, I have something to say to you. Hooray, it's Tori Wilson and the Boogeyman. All Ron Simmons can say is damn. Cardi B, bring me that wet ass pussy. And watch my raging blue ring boner go ham. Jeff Hardy found out tonight that this will be the year of the Viper. The Fiend can run all he wants, but for only so long can he hide behind her. Yay! Yay! You McIntyre dude! Let me tell you something, brother, that will pop 1.8 million viewers, brother, and get you lots of black wrestling fans, brother. You remind me a lot of myself, brother. So you go out there tonight, and you beat Keith Lee, brother, and then you face me at WrestleMania for the WWE title, dude, and then I win it clean, one, two, three, brother. Then Sting goes on to win the AEW world title at All In, brother, and then I issue the challenge at SummerSlam, brother. Legend versus Icon, title versus title, Hogan versus Sting at Bound for Glory, brother, 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 oh, brother. Main event for the WWE Championship, it's Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre, Mr. 1.5 himself. yee Wow. This was about as average of a world title television match as you could ever get. Drew's got his motions that he goes through. 
Keith Lee's wrestling more like the traditional big man, which is exactly not what made people get interested in him to begin with, but clearly is part of Vince's master vision and grandmaster plan. What type of master? Grandmaster of the what? You get the idea. The Krakatoa Cracker Killers Club, if you get my drift. Oh, my God. So, Drew McIntyre retains over Keith Lee. And then, just as you're getting to the point where he's showing some respect to, Drew, to Keith Lee, and Drew takes the mic, and you think something big is going to happen, well, by God, something big and spectacular does happen. Goldberg! Do, do, do. Goldberg! Do, do, do. YWC! IWC! Pissy! As can be! Goldberg! Dun, dun, dun. Here he comes in all his 50s plus bald-headed goatee glory, sitting there and rambling off about how Drew doesn't dis respect the freaking legends that are up there, guys and gals. That was Randy Orton that was going around all night disrespecting the legends. Drew didn't say anything. In fact, he got pigeonholed into a situation where he had to be associated with Hulk Hogan on camera. Like, Goldberg's promo made absolutely no sense. He's not making a demand, but he's making a challenge. Who writes this crap? So the challenge has been made. It's Goldberg, Drew McIntyre, at the Royal Rumble for the WWE Championship. Could it possibly be? <laughs> oh, that's what I like to hear, brother. <laughs> Don't worry about the future, brother. The future was 20 years ago, brother. And the future is now, brother. Goldberg as the WWE Champion. You want to know who's next? Drew McIntyre, you're nuts. And as you get to this big, ultimate crescendo of a moment, where you're wondering what's going to happen, all of a sudden you see Goldberg pushes down Drew McIntyre in a completely savage fashion. And unlike the professionals here, just like when you get to the point where it's really interesting,